When it comes to memorizing a piece, we all have hit some sort of a wall, and there's no one method that works better than another. It really depends on how you could make associations that works for you. It's a very personal affair. Welcome back to Joy of Practicing. I am Ferdi Talan. If you try to memorize a piece note by note by note, not only will it take you hundreds of years, it will also not last. To my mind, memorizing a piece is about associating your brain and your body. It's the holy trilogy of visual, tactile, and oral. What you hear, what you see, and what you touch. Let's break it down. Even at the learning stage with the music in front of you, you must train yourself to know where to look at any moment in the piece. We are so much used to being glued to the score that when it is time to take it off, we don't know where to look. This is the cadenza of the first movement, second piano concerto by Camille Saint-Saëns. There's these two voices in two different registers calling back and forth to each other. The way that I see it is... That's easy, right? So you could play that. Now my next note, if I take a look at it from this B to this F, it's very far. But then my left hand chord, the next left hand chord is actually here, which is considerably much closer to my right hand in the perimeter, in the visual perimeter. So that's where I look. And if you pay attention of what I just did, because I'm looking over here, I'm sending my left hand first, and then the right hand follows suit just a tad later. So not only visual cues, I'm also creating timing cues for my body. Now here, if I do both of them and I jumped, most of the time I'll miss because I don't have any contact or I don't have any reference to where I am in the keyboard. So here, it would make sense if the left hand stays because this is close. And so on. The hands correlate with each other. There's a certain dance that they're doing, a certain choreography in between them. Be aware of this when you're practicing. Know their direction. Are they moving in the same direction or are they moving in an opposite way? Figure out which hand leads. Figure out which hand cues which hand at any point in the piece. Are the thumb playing together? Are the second finger or the fifth finger playing together? These are things that you want to pay attention to. What I mean by choreography of the hand is this. There's one component that's putting both of the hands together is that I'm realizing that at the syncopation, the right hand is the end of a slur and this is a syncopation in the left hand. So they move in opposite. Also the first one. This is moving in opposite. So you understand where the hands need to go. This is like giving your fingers eyes. You can train yourself to feel the transfer of weight in between notes and to touch the key before you play them. If you do not feel the key before you strike them, that means you're always attacking from the air. 
Not only does this make the distance between notes further, you also don't have complete control of the sound that you want to produce. The goal is to minimize and make the distance between notes smaller and smaller and smaller. Until the end, you only need to shift your weight between notes and have the correct movement. In order to be able to do this, I need a completely compressed and concise movement. Even though I sound, I produce a staccato sound, I don't go I don't go out of the keyboard. I completely stay on top of it and really feel the keys before I play. And this is really the beauty of spacing. At the very beginning, you may have to do bigger movement. But as long as you're in contact with the keyboard and feel like you're being propelled to the next note. After a while, you start realizing that there are lots of silence in between the notes and you could start reducing them until all you have to do is really just transfer the weight. Your ears are an amazing tool if you know what to listen for. When a player's ears are open, the playing usually sounds much more organic as opposed to when someone just lead with the body and not the ear, it sounds much more mechanical. So here, yeah, let's break it apart. There's four different components here. There's the bass. And then there's two voices in the right hand. And then the 16th note are just harmonic fillers, you know, they're not really that important. So you have... And then try to see if you could produce it with the intended fingerings that you're going to do. Have that clear then you figure out what needs to happen with the little notes but you have the big framework already so let me break it down to you I played this much sooner I enter this early and then I come in really really soft into the key and play this faster so I have more time here If you listen to the decay of the sound after you strike the key and use this time in between to shift your weight to the next note, it will tell you exactly when to enter the key to produce the sound that you want. Okay, let's go back to Schubert. If I don't listen to the silence, I will get this. It's a... Sound, 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 sound. With no um, connection whatsoever to what's happening in, um, around. But if, I, if you follow it... When you are aware of these things in your daily practice, memorization becomes a byproduct. I like to refer it as installing the music into your system to let it run through your blood veins so that your body, mind, and spirit can work as one. If you are enjoying these series, please subscribe and don't forget to turn on the notifications so that you will be notified whenever a new episode is released. Thank you very much for watching. I am your host, Ferdi Talan, and I will see you next time.